welcome, Sir Eric Kessels, uh, one of the most creative people in the world, I think. Um, and uh, I know um, we were just saying, just but last saw you in 2016 in Design and Darbo, and you did an absolutely incredible talk. Um, and I think it was about failure um, at the time. I think it just it was when probably soon after you had launched this book, I, I imagine. Um, but yeah, um, how, how are you doing? Hope all is going well. Yeah, very well. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, and I heard you just got back from from Italy from a, a, a doing an, an incredible talk, and that's sort of uh, I guess the, this is the fascinating thing, and, and why we why I really wanted to chat is you've unlike a lot of people who you know we interview in the creative world and normally just doing advertising, you do so much more. Um, I know you, you, you've recorded. Uh, uh, you recorded music tracks, you've done art exhibitions with photography, uh, written multiple books, um, and run a, an incredibly successful advertising agency with uh, that's made tons of fantastic brands and, and great work. So congratulations. How do you do it? Well, do you wake up in the morning and just go, oh, I wonder what I can do today? Is <laughs> Are you just naturally a curious person? No, no, I can be also very uh, lazy also. I, th I think uh, to be lazy and a bit uh, bored at some times is very good to load uh, the battery. And uh, no, but I mean, uh, it, um, I think you, you need to, I mean, when you really sit down and you have to come up with an idea, it really doesn't work. But you, it's more that you, have, you need to have an antenna for, uh, for these things. And whenever something passes by, it, uh, you pick it up and you uh, do something with it. When when you are feeling sort of uninspired, is, are there particular places that you normally go for for inspiration? Or... Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say that, for instance, on the, when you uh, take a shower or you're in the toilet or uh, you're in an airplane, that uh, they have the best ideas. But that, that's also uh, true, I think, that uh, because it has more to do with the isolation. Yeah? So. Right. I mean, if you, if we literally look at how many hour, uh, minutes uh, a day we are actually very effective in uh, coming up with ideas, it's in a way very little. Eh? So uh, you really need to isolate yourself uh, at at one point and and concentrate and um, be uh, yeah really on your own uh, with your mind to uh, to come up with ideas and uh, yeah like. Uh, for instance, when I'm in an airplane, uh, and uh, yeah, to me uh, it's quite inspiring because you there's no phone, there's no internet connection, so you are just down to uh, the basics. And and uh, uh, of course, later when you have the spark of an idea, you can use uh, um, yeah, you're you're going online to find materials to find in, uh, other uh, um, materials that might help this, but. Uh, um, yeah, in basis, you really need to uh, be very isolated. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that was interesting looking at a lot of your work. It, it's often finding these these amazing sort of insights or lateral thinking that perhaps people wouldn't have seen. I, I remember hearing one of your stories about, uh, was it finding a, a, a selection of photos in, was it in Cannes of, of like a lady who like someone who had 400 photographs of one person <laughs> yeah that was in barcelona yeah yeah uh, yeah. yeah i mean uh yeah my my interest uh, in general is in uh, uh i mean i to be honest uh, i'm not really into uh perfection or uh, perfect ideas or perfect executions so i always look a little bit for things in the fringe and that's also where, um, yeah, in advertising, uh, as an art director, you know, I, I never used uh, the typical uh, directions or the typical um, sources to work with. You know, there, there. When I started, uh, there was a, yeah, really like a, if you worked in advertising, you also worked with advertising photographers or advertising yeah. illustrators or, and. Um, I think uh, since I worked in London for uh, several years, that, that changed a little bit because there, there was already a bit more of an open um, atmosphere that you could work with anybody 
if you would be in, if if you find if that person found you the work interesting so uh, yeah from that moment on i i always started to uh, make different combinations and uh, work with people that never did a commercial job before and uh, yeah this is very important uh, and in in that case uh, because of that i got also interested in in uh, yeah, for instance, in, in photographs that I found on flea markets, because mm. yeah, these were done by amateurs. There were a lot of mistakes in there, even in the family albums when people had their eyes closed or when there was a finger in front of the lens, uh, like uh, that. Uh, um, yeah, they still stick it, stuck it in, in an album and it was still there for many years. So, yeah, this inspired me always, the, 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 the flaws and the mistakes that you find in people's behavior in people's behavior with the camera or uh, writing things down or recording things so that that's uh, I mean the the imperfect is quite an inspiration because yeah like when you are completely perfect and, and when your idea already has to be from the start perfect it's, it's not working I mean I yeah I also compare this often with uh, the backyard and the front yard of your house uh, because nowadays a lot of people only function and work in their front yard yeah. because um, you know the front yard is your uh, your your web page it's your portfolio it's your instagram page um, it's the finished work or the exhibition uh, but this is like the end result while um, yeah a lot of people don't really visit their own backyard and the backyard is a place where there is uh, unfinished projects where you walk around half naked because there's a fence around it. There's a lot of uh, rubbish there because you are kind of embarrassed about your backyard, personal stories, fascinations. There's a dirty shed somewhere so with a lot of uh, stuff in there. You know, and these are the places where you really uh, find your ideas and your uh, so that the ideas come from deep uh, passions, secrets. Uh, Mm, you know, ironic uh, things, uh, and, and um, yeah, those things are more to be found in the in the backyard. Yeah, I love the the idea of sort of imperfection that you found in photography, influencing imperfection that I think I see see in your advertising, which makes it sort of stand out a lot. Like you, you often, I think one of the most famous campaigns you did was um, for a hotel company where it was sharing all the Im imperfections. Um, is it is it still going? Is it is that ad? I mean, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, the yeah, th this is. I mean, I think also that uh, working in an industry. I mean, I always had, uh, you know, quite ambivalent. Uh, um, yeah, I, idea. I mean, uh, I, I don't really like advertising. Also, I mean, uh, to be honest, I really hate it at uh, ninety-five percent of the times, because, you know, like, uh, let's be honest, uh, a lot of stuff is really horrible. You know, like yeah. uh, a lot of compromises. Uh, you know, it has to be done uh, to please someone. Uh, you know, there, there uh, were a lot of uh, hurdles on the road. That's what you feel. You know, and I think that. Yeah, like uh, it's very stereotypical, the whole industry and very opportunistic also. But um, yeah, like that makes it also quite uh, good to work in to break with these conventions and to mm -hmm. really uh, find another way and uh, take a side street instead of uh, driving in the traffic jam on the main uh, road, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. where everyone is. And that is... Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's what I enjoyed. Also, the um, you know the, the the you know you work of course with the, the biggest talents in a way because they are all um, grouping there in that industry because there yeah there's money to be made. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, on the other hand, it's also good to uh, be uh, quite stubborn and to be. Uh, try to do things differently and that that is quite possible if you communicate well about it you know i think that you know in in advertising uh, a big mistake is that a lot of specialists are very good in uh, communication but they are actually not so good in communicating themselves 
mm. about their idea towards a possible client or uh, I mean uh, there is where they often are afraid because an agency thinks like uh, we have to sell this work because we have to keep this client and we have to do this and that but um, yeah like um, uh, actually when you are really taking someone by the hand and uh, explaining why you do this and why this is a very good uh, idea and why nobody has done it yet this yet before many uh, clients uh, will uh, understand this and and uh, and go for it are there, are there certain things that you do to help people when they join your advertising agency or when you meet younger people um, are there certain thing, is, is there a certain thing that you tell them to do to, to try and make sure that they do more of what you've just been saying? Like, are there, are, there, are there sort of bits of advice or wisdom that you give them to, to make them think more? I mean, one of the most valuable advices is also for people that uh, nowadays, for instance, uh, start their own company or uh, I think it's very important to say no. Huh? Like... Uh, you have to say many, many times no. You have to say also, of course, yes a few times. But uh, <laughs> saying no uh, to things, it's uh, much more important because you, uh, yeah, you are really. I mean, for instance, when uh, you get a work offered, and um, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, good money to be made, but it's not really your thing. Then uh, it's better to say no because. Uh, yeah, like uh, all the work you do is also that's your portfolio and that's uh, what you have been working on for a long time. So <clears throat> when you work for a year on uh, shitty stuff, then yeah, it's not very likely that the next year you will get uh, suddenly a uh, much better uh, job offered. So, you know, you have to uh, also, uh, yeah, by the work that you make, you also create your personality as a company and as also as a creative. And um, I think that uh, the the personality of a single person or of a company is also a bit underrated, uh, of course, because uh, I think that the personality is much more important than your portfolio. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, I had, uh, for instance, a job interview once and I was... Uh, talking to this designer for first half an hour, then an hour. And it was very, you know, uh, yeah, it was really interesting talk. And uh, I uh, really liked her, uh, the way she uh, approached things and her character. And uh, in the end, uh, I, I told her like, okay, when, when can you start? When can you, uh, uh, you know, start working? And, and, and suddenly she became uh, very, very, uh, she was blushing enormously. She became very embarrassed a little bit. And she said, like, yeah, that's fine. But uh, you haven't seen my work yet. So I've, I was completely, I forgot completely to ask for her work. And um, yeah, in the end, I saw her work. And, and this was also very, uh, uh, yeah, it fitted perfectly. So it was already what, it, what I expected. But uh, the fact that I didn't ask for her work was uh, actually a very good thing because mm. you know she she had such a illuminating uh, uh, personality that uh, that this was almost, yeah that was already enough and, yeah oh that's, that's awesome what what was the you talking about the power of saying no what, what's the thing that you're most happy that you said no to if you think of anything i mean we had um, in the, in Kessel's Kramer uh, several times maybe two or three, th three times that um, there was a client that was maybe 60% of our income uh, at that time when we were maybe with 15 or 20 people. And yeah, it started to become quite uh, complicated to work for them and, and, uh, and uh, work was yeah, starting to go in a wrong direction. And yeah, at that time we decided just with a few people in the company to, to, uh, to stop with the client. So, call the client and say like let's uh, not do this anymore let's uh, and um, I mean we informed other people in the company that we would uh, like to do this and in the end everyone agreed even though it could have been very risky for their jobs or for but uh, in the end that was always the best decision because you keep a clean slate and you are very uh, yeah it's, it's very uh, good that you are very clear about something and and uh, 
yeah i mean it, it, you need to be a bit stubborn and a bit uh, because that is also i mean i don't want to be arrogant uh, because of that uh, yeah. because i have a deep um, um opinion about i mean i don't want to make uh, shit uh, work i don't want to yeah. make um, uh, rubbish and uh, i mean uh, life is too short for that uh, i mean you you when in the end uh, you're not able to uh, make good work yeah maybe you should find another job or uh, i mean there's a lot of people complaining in the in in that industry also and um, I think like why because you you have a lot of opportunities i mean they don't see the opportunities but uh, there is um, yeah when you are clear about the path you want to take uh, it's good to stick to that and and mm -hmm. uh, yeah there will be always fans coming to you and uh, that uh, like your approach i mean you you know a creative or an agency or whatever they you don't have to work for everyone that's a bit of a utopia i mean you work for the clients that you also really uh, deserve. I mean, those are the ones that come to you. The other way around, it hardly ever works. You know, like uh, I think we had uh, several times that we knocked on the door of a client that we would like to work for, but uh, that hardly ever worked because you mostly enter the wrong door of that company or uh, the wrong moment. And uh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you've obviously dealt with lots of different projects in, in the past. Was there any sort of particular peculiar briefs that you ever received that, you know, or the, the most interesting or peculiar brief that you've ever received? And how, how did you kind of approach that? What was there? If you don't I mind. Mean, there is many. Um, um, yeah, like, for instance, um, I think often uh, like a company or a client comes with a problem and uh, you know, they come to you because they think that you can solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, it's uh, even uh, good to think the other way around to make the problem even worse. And that that is a solution to uh, really uh, uh, solve the problem. And uh, so th th those are always quite nice. Uh, yeah, things that were made in the company, like, um, for instance, uh, uh, Two people in Casgrima had this. Uh, they were working on this job uh, for a school, and uh, we did a lot of work for that school. But uh, there was a small job because they had like a lot of uh, problems in the campus with garbage, and there were certain uh, fixed garbage bins there. And um, yeah, so that's a problem, and you know you 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 need to solve it. But uh, yeah, we decided to make it even worse, so to make it very very complicated to throw away your garbage by building a fence around the garbage bin by posting the garbage bin on a tree with a ladder so that you have to do it like that so there were seven uh, um, permanent installations uh, that made it very complicated uh, to throw away the garbage and and this worked perfectly because the uh, students they liked this kind of approach and uh, that we took the piss out of them and uh, and, and uh, suddenly the yeah the whole problem was solved but, but done by a very kind of um, upside down solution in a way that's incredible oh, i'd love i'd love to see that i'll uh, have to look it up what's the client name so we can uh, uh, google it afterwards yeah, there was uh, for the school called uh, Koning Willem I uh, College. It's like a college in uh, Holland, yeah. and, uh, but it's uh, uh, yeah. When you you can find it when when you type in uh, garbage or rubbish and Castle Kramer, which is anyway <laughs> quite a nice uh, search term. See where you end up. Huh? Uh, so um, I know one of the things that that you you said before is sort of. Um you know, you have, you have to be able to kill your darlings, um, that you're the, the, sometimes you have to be comfortable to let go of things that you've created. Have, have there been anything, any sort of projects that you've worked on or ideas that you've had that you found particularly challenging to let go of? Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's, uh, um, in a way, when you have ideas, you never let them go. Uh, I mean, mm. uh, when they are not happening, you lock them somewhere mm. up in your mind. And whenever there's an opportunity, you uh, uh, find a way again. Uh, I remember that there was once, I mean, yeah, like we 
we always wanted to make a film where everyone was naked in the film. And uh, I, we tried it once with a fashion company and uh, so that everyone was naked apart from uh, the two people that were wearing the new collection of that company. So then suddenly uh, all the naked people were looking very weirdly at the two uh, people dressed uh, in, in uh, clothing. Uh, but the uh, fashion company didn't really go for that. So uh, later we found another, uh, you know, opportunity for that. We worked for a health insurance company and uh, also made a proposed a film where everyone was naked. Um, because, you know, with this health insurance, you insured uh, your most valuable possession, which is in a way your body. Yeah. So that's why we showed how vulnerable in a way everyone is without clothes. I mean, the clothes are just like a thin layer mm -hmm. that you wear, but it's not really protection for yourself uh, other than a cover. But um, yeah. yeah, so we uh, tried this and um, but the client, you know, said like, uh, yeah, sorry, but I'm not going to propose this to my board. And uh, yeah, so they, they uh, didn't go for it. Uh, two weeks later, we proposed another idea with that client and yeah, they liked the new idea, but then uh, he said like, uh, yeah, but I have to admit that in the last two weeks, I was still thinking a lot about uh, your first idea and uh, I want to come back to it. So in the end, uh, we made that first idea and, um, and uh, it ran for uh, two years on, on uh, television and uh, yeah, it was, was really, really nice, but it's more like to show that um, yeah, sometimes also when, when, yeah, you really believe in an idea, you can also show to a client that you're really sick, uh, that, uh, sick about it, that they mm -hmm. don't go for it. And, uh, yeah, sometimes then you still need to let it go, but yeah, then, uh, yeah, you, you, you put it in the parking and, uh, wait for another opportunity. Yeah, have a have an idea vault is uh, is something we often talk about. So this idea of yeah, keeping the things that that don't work out, maybe they'll work for another client or for another time. Yeah, um, I mean, how much do you, uh, nowadays you sort of do you are you spending most of your time on on the art side of things or on the advertising things, or is it a balance? And I guess does you know could you live without one, or do they both inform each other? Yeah, I mean, since 2001, I have done uh, a lot of things. Uh, I have I've done like more my art uh, uh, work and and uh, and uh, commercial work. I've done that uh, uh, sim simultaneous in a way, uh, even though they are completely different things. Uh, but uh, uh, since uh, yeah, maybe three or four years now, uh, I am not so much involved in the or totally not involved anymore in the day-to-day -day work in the in the company and uh, uh, also because like a new generation of people that uh, I have worked with uh, in the past uh, you know sometimes for uh, seven or eight years sometimes for uh, 25 years uh, yeah th there was a good opportunity for them to uh, uh, yeah to take over and to mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, run this uh, themselves, and, but they are, you know, they are. Uh, it's very nice for me also to see that they are in the DNA of the company because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know completely everything that they are working on. So sometimes I see something passing and I think like, wow, that's a nice idea. And then I look on our own uh, website and it's something uh, that they have done. So that that is quite uh, quite nice. Um, but uh, I mean. Uh, yeah, this is very nice that uh, you kind of continue the family and uh, yeah. because yeah, people always stayed uh, and still do for a very long time in the company. And um, yeah, there's there's many people who have uh, who have been there already now for 25, 26 years. Wow. And, uh, and some people uh, recently a girl uh, left after 20 years working with us. And uh, yeah, so that, that's a really good sign also. And for uh, yeah, for the company, much better to continue like this than to sell it to um, yeah, and, uh, people that don't have any connection with and roots with uh, with uh, yeah, the style and the ethics of the of the company. What, what do you think are some of the, the reasons why people stay for such a long period of time? So it seems to be in the creative world, it seems like 
the, the churn in the creative world tends to be very high in, in the advertising um, industry. So, you know, fascinated to learn what, what you think um, helps people to stay longer. Are there particular things that you do or, or a particular culture that, that you helped grow there? Do you think that works? Yeah, I think, uh, um, yeah, the, one of the most important things is also honesty, you know, like uh, you have to be very honest and very... Uh, uh direct to the people you work with and uh um yeah there is no uh, politics in the company and uh, there's also everyone is kind of naked uh, metaphorically because mm. you work all in one open space uh, you can hear everyone you can smell everyone you can you know it's like uh one uh, open environment uh I mean, at at the time when we started, this was quite new. Not now, now that's not that new anymore. But uh, anyway, the um, yeah, like in in a, a group like that, you also see and you feel after uh, only after a few weeks, you feel already if someone fits there or not. And mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, by now we have kind of an idea what kind of people that fit uh, there. And um, yeah, so. Uh, it's also people that, you know, that have a, that have certain uh, interesting stories with them, apart from the work they make. Also people that are uh, different in what kind of hobbies they have, what kind of fascinations they have. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, the, the, the contrary of what I, was what I was just saying of hiring someone uh, that I didn't ask for the portfolio, there was also one uh, case where I looked at the portfolio. It was very, very good. It was uh, one of the best uh, portfolios I, I've ever seen. And then I, I got kind of curious. So I started to discuss with this person more and more why uh, he was doing this. And uh, and in the end, uh, it really, after an hour, it turned out that he was actually making the portfolio because of that he wanted to work with us or that he wanted to work in some other places where he thought that this work would be really uh, fitting. And uh, But yeah, he admitted also that uh, in a way, yeah, he uh, talking about front yards and backyards, uh, his ba backyard was, was, was uh, kind of similar to his front yard. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a... Uh, uh, you know, the authenticity of people is also very important. Mm -hmm. How authentic is someone, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, we are uh, creative people are all kind of not normal. You know? Like uh, you, you should not be normal because yeah, it's, uh, I mean, everybody is hyperactive. Everybody has a bit uh, ADHD or is a bit autistic. Uh, so this is normal, you know, like, uh, uh, it's a, it's a, like, um, uh, it's almost being, um, uh, yeah, a controlled, uh, madhouse in a way where, uh, you have to take care sometimes of people and people take care of themselves and, uh, and of each other. So, no, but I, I think the authenticity of people is, is very important and, uh, yeah, it's good. So it's like a lot of that work, I guess, is, comes up front in these interview processes where you just get a, a good idea of people. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. So I guess you you probably don't leave that to an HR team in the back office. You, I'm guessing you do that with a, with with the teams of people who they'll be working with. Or yeah, they, they're, they're, it's right. HR is <laughs> sorry, it's yeah. completely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's I think even uh, in a very, very big company that HR is like completely overrated. I think that uh, mm -hmm. the, the director or the, of the company or uh, should should hire people, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. this, this makes the, the culture of a company is very important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that make, makes a lot of sense. Um, and then you, you've got this amazing business that's also sort of a publishing uh, company now as well right it's uh you've been publishing i i mean too many books to count i guess now but the the this, um i think there's the, the, these are also limited edition books so they mostly around uh, uh photography if um, i remember rightly what have you always been fascinated in photography or did it it just uh pop up to him so my dad was a photographer so i'm i'm, I'm a big fan myself no i think uh... <clears throat> 
Yeah, it has two uh, origins in a way. One is what I just said in the beginning, that uh, I work with a lot of uh, photography uh, as an art director. And uh, I was asked also in that, you know, working with, with, for instance, Magnum photographers. At one point, I was asked to uh, make their, uh, yeah, edit some of their books. And uh, yeah, so in that case, you... Yeah, you are quite uh, deeply into that uh, industry in a way. Uh, the other reason is maybe also because, yeah, I, I was uh, in my youth, I was like, uh, when I was 11, uh, my sister was nine and she, um, yeah, she had an accident and she died uh, because a car uh, drove over her while she was crossing the street and he uh, drove through a red light. Uh, and um, yeah, so this was a very unfortunate uh, thing. Uh, yeah. And I remember at that time also vividly that uh, my parents, they were looking for her last picture and uh, the last picture that was taken of her. And uh, they found one, which was actually a picture from a holiday park where the whole family was. It was like a color image where that was taken by an anonymous photographer who worked in that park and leaving the park, you could buy that print and take it home. So that was the last picture of my sister at that time. And uh, my parents um, decided to crop that image and uh, make an, uh, take another picture of the image in black and white and uh, print it in black and white and enlarge it and put that in the living room. And uh, yeah, that, that is for me also, uh, something very important that, uh, you know, in this case, my parents uh, reappropriated that image and, and made it uh, like a very, it's a very mundane image. Uh, when anybody else would look at that image, it's very bit out of focus, not really well cropped. It's a terrible image in a way. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, for uh, three people in this world, this image is very, very important and uh, almost iconic. And mm -hmm. uh, that, that uh, is also what uh fascinates me you know how you can reappropriate images take them from its original uh, context bring it into a new context and and uh and then suddenly the meaning changes and suddenly uh people really start to look at it again instead of consume images eh? so so um yeah you could say that um also um yeah, we, we, we are now living in a period where we consume images in a rapid uh, tempo, but uh, it's quite good to, I think that nowadays, or that what, what interests me, that uh, the stories behind a single image or a series of image is uh, nowadays maybe more important than the image itself. Because right. a lot of images are, and photographs have, have been made already. There are thousands of memes or... Uh, ways of people, how they photograph things, uh, selfies, their food, their travels, their uh, certain landscapes, certain filters, it's all uh, the same, you know, like, uh, and even in, in advertising is also the same, like, uh, if you look at online advertising, how a hotel should be photographed from the inside, how a car should be in, photographed. So these are all uh, repetitions. And, um, and for me, it's interesting how I can um, yeah, look for certain outliers and certain things in the fringe and to uh, really uh, put a finger on that and point it out and, and ask people to look at it. It, it. I'm so sorry about your sister. And I think it's, but I think it's, there's a something sort of lovely in there about the power of imperfection in an image and that that almost makes the picture more more meaningful, um, which fits, I guess, with what you were saying about your, you know, what's your back garden or your backyard look like? Yeah. It's the imperfections where you often seem to find. Yeah, so that is that is my backyard, you know, a part of my backyard. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, what what's the what what's been your most recent project? What's that been focusing on? Yeah, now I'm working for three or four years already on a bigger European project called uh, Europe Archive. And it's a website called europearchive.eu. And uh, this is a, a more a anthropological uh, project where, um, yeah, I mean, nowadays people migrate uh, a lot uh, in and out Europe and uh, also within Europe. But uh, the objects that every country lives with and uh, that are sometimes typical for a country and also in the heritage and in the tradition of a company, 
uh, they also migrate through uh, Europe and they are not really fixed uh, to a certain country anymore. So in the in this archive, we uh, I, I do this together with Thomas Mylander, a friend of mine, and uh, we collect uh, really objects from that we specifically search on online or on uh, flea markets and but we buy the objects physically uh, and um, yeah we recreate a collective memory of that country and um, <laughs> and, and uh, that is um, yeah we we had now in this summer an exhibition uh, with it in uh, in um, hungary hungary that, that was the first uh, exhibition and so now this archive is growing and it has like yeah we'll have more stops in europe and uh and uh yeah for for uh i think in i don't know when this will end uh hopefully not soon but uh, the, the the yeah the project is is uh, growing a lot and um um yeah it, uh, i mean it will be also iconic at one point i hope because it's really nice to um pause these things and collect them and show them uh yeah what uh yeah these are sometimes hilarious things they are not expensive they are with certain tradition things that are repaired i mean for instance uh, one of the most brilliant things i found in romania it's like a frying pan that uh, the handle was broken but then they found like a jesus that was also broken from from its cross and they repaired uh, the frying pan with a with a jesus handle so uh, <laughs> Yeah, like uh, these are uh, very um, strange uh, habits and uh, or uh, yeah, like in uh, we found in Hungary, like a cooking pan on the flea market, but it was filled with uh, mobile phone parts. So it was looked, it looked almost like a vegetable soup with all these colors in there. But um, yeah, actually, it, is, it has something to do with the fact how quickly we consume uh, technology at the moment and uh, yeah then it ends up in a pan in a red pan in a in a market and um, yeah so <clears throat> there's also in on the website in on the archive in, in Europe archive there's all the countries and there you can find also stories with every object that we found so that is a very um, yeah that's where I'm on and off uh, working on yeah, it's incredible. I, I, I opened up the site and looked now quickly. It, it looks fantastic. And I love I love the stories that go with each of the, mm. the images as well. So I yeah, highly recommend it, europearchive.eu. And very sad that um, that, you, that we can't have the UK in there anymore. No. <laughs> but you have got Ireland, so close. <laughs> we'll uh, have to rectify that at some stage. Um, but um, yeah, the uh, the other thing I, I was going to say was the the the, this in so much of your work the, the so much of it is absolutely hilarious as well like often the you know the things in the failure book i've got behind me here and the the complete amateur guide uh, book that you've got as well uh, some of those i was cry laughing going through that uh it's it's a new you know the jesus um, panhandle that you just explained there i mean it how is it just you're just very very good at observ observing these things because i mean they're all kind of seem to be out there in the ether but you, yeah you but it has also to do with that uh, uh what we call as uh so-called like normal life or normal people or uh, ordinary life or ordinary people yeah there you can find the most hilarious things you know right. like, uh, and uh life is not normal you know it is uh hilarious sometimes uh, like a normal life and uh, I mean that that's also what you see of course in uh, in history of uh, filmmakers or documentary makers or you know like there there is uh, yeah for instance uh, like in England with uh, Ken Loach for instance the, the filmmaker yeah he also focuses on how absurd in a way normal life is huh? mm -hmm. like, um, but also in uh, <clears throat> yeah you can uh, when you have an antenna for it you yeah you find things on the street you sometimes you hear like uh, crazy uh, conversations like a part of a conversation or or uh, like a note that someone dro dropped on the street and you know things out of context are always uh, good and and that is also what you uh, what you point out uh, just now because 
uh, there also you take it out of its original context, put it in a new one, and then suddenly uh, it is something hilarious. So um, that is often the, the trick. <clears throat> Yeah, it's amazing. I know, I know we're running out of time, so I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll try and uh, uh, ask one one or two final sort of closing thoughts. But um, I mean, if what sort of advice I guess would you would you give to people who want to be able to look at the world in a slightly different different way? I mean, you 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 seem to have a real knack at it. Everything that you do has always been. I mean, personally, I just find it always very inspirational and very interesting. Um, but uh, and I, I don't find many other people who who look at the world quite the way that you do. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is also yeah for me, and that's maybe also the reason why for me when you say these things, it's yeah I I, I think like uh, okay yeah, yeah but for me it's more like the you know it's not a planned thing you know like uh, with uh, the company with my art career. You know, when I would have a certain uh, career plan in that, it probably never would happen. Huh? Yeah. So uh, it, it is also very important that you are, uh, yeah, you always need to stay very, uh, uh, you know, you should not never be too confident, you know, like mm -hmm. overly confident or, I mean, I really, I uh, every time when I start something new or I have to come up with an idea, I feel like a complete uh, beginner and that is really uh, in a way quite a nice thing not not at that moment because you I think like shit uh, how many times how long do I do this and uh, why uh, can't I have this idea earlier but at the at the end it's very good because it's good to be uh, to behave like a beginner um because you know nobody is born with a talent to become uh, a fantastic uh, creative or uh, mm -hmm brilliant artist uh, i mean you don't have a talent for that it's like really you you need to develop your skills in um, daring to let go or daring to be very uh, intuitional and uh, not panicking and of course these are things that you can learn but mm -hmm. um, yeah like uh, and these are the important things why something happens and uh, why you suddenly have an idea because you leave the space in your head to allow to uh, have that idea. I mean, mm. it's not that uh, my brain is not different from yours, uh, mm. uh, but uh, or from others. But uh, yeah, sometimes um, you need to be very almost naive, stay very naive in that. Huh? So uh, um, yeah, so those are things. Uh, I mean. Um, yeah, you, you should not be afraid of having uh, not an idea because, but you, if you have the confidence that it will once come and you have the feeling that you can trust on your intuition, uh, mm. those are uh, good things. Yeah, it's fascinating. It kind of reminds me of that sort of get comfortable with the uncomfortable and yeah, yeah, be happy or, or be happy with a beginner's mindset. And I, I love. Yeah, I do love that, that you often find that there's beauty and imperfection. You seem to be an expert at doing that. And I hope that you carry on finding these these beauties and all these wonderful imperfections that we have in the world for many years to come. And, and thank you for, for finding them. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time. If you um, anyone um, listening, please do go uh, uh, check out Eric's website. He's got a brilliant website. You can find lots of his creative work. Uh, you can also find uh, links to all of your fantastic books as well. It's just erickessels.com. Uh, a Google search will get you there very quickly. Um, but yeah, Eric, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate okay. your time. And um, yeah, have a good one. <laughs>